But here's the crux of today's podcast. We can only confess our sins when we know that Jesus forgives us. We need to know that ahead of time. If we are afraid or we think he's going to reject us, then we will avoid being honest and we will avoid confessing. Welcome to the Lost Art of Parenting. We are here to help educate, entertain, and encouraging, encourage regarding all things parenting. We want to help you understand what you are doing and why, so you can increase the odds of raising children who are prepared for life while enjoying your job as a parent and enjoying your children along the way. My, ni- my name is Brittany, and I am here with Kim. Welcome back if you've been listening this far. Um, today, our topic is truth tellers and truth receivers. What do you have to say about all that, Kim? Oh, I know. It's kind of an odd topic I'm excited, isn't it? But it's intriguing. Truth tellers and truth receivers. All right, so let's dive in. Good to have you all here with us today, everybody. Um, Well, actually, the truth obviously is necessary for healthy relationships, effective communication, what we call trust, transparency, and intimacy. So without truth, really nothing matters, nothing works. And nobody wants to be around somebody they don't trust. Amen, sister? Yeah. And we don't want anybody lying to us. It's a big deal. But it's a two-way street. So we feel guilty when we lie, and our souls and our conscience feels heavy, and it weighs us down. So it's it's not good on either end, obviously. And the truth makes us free, and it helps build healthy relationships, even though truth is often really difficult for us to face. We want it, but sometimes we avoid it. So... What do we do when we need to tell someone the truth or want to share a secret or unburden our soul or our conscience with something? Like, who do we go to, right? Right. So as followers of Christ, we go to Jesus. We go to him. He hears our confession of sin without anger or judgment or intimidation, and he wants us to be honest with him. So basically, Christ is our example. He's perfect. He never lies. We can always trust him. He's love. He provides forgiveness and grace. And because of who he is, we can strive to be more like him. We can trust him, rely on him, and lean on him. This character of Christ is what opens the door for us to come to him with anything because we know he'll hear it and receive it. But here's the crux of today's podcast. We can only confess our sins when we know that Jesus forgives us. We need to know that ahead of time. If we are afraid or we think he's going to reject us, then we will avoid being honest and we will avoid confessing. So we're obviously a podcast about parenting. So what is the lesson for parenting here? As parents, we want our kids to be honest with us. But do we make it hard or easy for them to do that? That is the question. So our kids need to know that they can come to us and be honest because they can trust our response to them. So we're going to talk today about how they learn through our response that we can be someone they can go to or not. They have an outlet for their guilt and shame. They can speak the truth and they can learn from their mistakes but still be loved, accepted, and forgiven. Yeah. I, uh, Mason and I decided early, early on, um, when we got married and was expecting day, uh, my daughter, um, that we would, we've always strived for, I want her to think, um, oh crap, I messed up. I need my parents and not, oh crap, my parents are going to kill me. Mm -hmm. Is it so important that your home structure and your parents are who you can come to because it's the best way to show God's love for them to continue right down this positive path and showing their own kids. Yeah. They can come to you with little stuff or big stuff, right? Yeah. Yeah. So sometimes we don't tell the truth because of course we don't, we want to avoid the wrath, (laughs) the shame, the punishment, the judgment, the rejection of others, right? So we avoid telling the truth because we don't want to feel unaccepted or unloved. It's actually a critical need of all people for unconditional love. 
And it can make us feel hopeless, worthless, and we don't feel like things can change because we we can't unburden ourselves, so we can't feel redeemed. Right. It's all connected. And when we want to be loved unconditionally and accepted despite our mistakes, we want to unburden our souls. We want to reveal the truth without that added pain and burden and fear and rejection. So we want to correct our mistakes and learn from them, and we want to move forward in a positive and healthy way. So what if the receiver, that means the person who hears our confection, our confession, betrays us? <laughs> so I'm sure we can all think of incidences where this has happened to you, but what if you go to somebody and you tell them the truth or tell them a secret, whatever it is, and they promise to keep it in the vault, I call it. They promise yeah. not to tell anybody. And with in minutes, <laughs> they tell other people, right? Or what if they promise to just li- listen to us with compassion? Oh, I won't get angry. But instead, they do. They get angry oh, yeah. and they, quote, <laughs> punish us, right? When this happens, they are teaching us and we are learning that they cannot be trusted with our feelings, our confession, our secrets. And there is a huge consequence to us then learning that them not being trustworthy teaches us that we're not going to trust them again. We right. shut down, don't we? So then what? So we learn to not confess, not tell the truth, not address the secrets in our life. We keep everything to ourselves. We lie, we avoid, and we continue to carry burdens that get heavier and heavier and heavier. And that definitely impacts our life. Oh, for sure. I was just remembering um, when I was a kid, I would take the gas out of our shed and put it in my truck because I didn't want to spend my money on my own gas. So I used (laughs) our uh, lawnmower (laughs) gas all the time. And I am 34 years old. And I just told my dad last week. (laughs) And he still had the same disappointed look that I expected him to have if I told him then. And that's what, just the look alone kept me from telling him, hey, I'm out of gas. Should I take your gas? Yeah. Right. And he, of course, was like, oh my word, like, just talk to me, <laughs> you know, but I was so nervous about the disappointed look that I'd kept it a secret well yeah. into adulthood. <laughs> it's, it's, it's disappointed look, it's rejection. It's, oh my gosh, maybe I'm not loved as much or right now what, or is there going to be punishment or anger or whatever? Yeah. It's a big deal, isn't it? Oh, for sure. It's yeah. the first thing in Genesis when Adam and Eve sin, the first thing God says is, where are you? Because <laughs> they're hiding. <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah. And he was giving them an opportunity to be truthful correct Uh, and the key words i think what you're saying is approachability we need to be approachable yes we do and forgiveness those are those are huge huge things Mm -hmm. yeah they are pretty good so there's two there's two roles right i the the content or the title of today's podcast is truth tellers and truth receivers yes So there are two roles here. So let's talk about that. Truth tellers, um, we can tell the truth when we know we can trust the receiver. That's, that's That's the first step. If we're fearful of the receiver's reaction, we're more likely to avoid telling the truth. We'll hide, we'll be sneaky, and we won't be honest. So how do we feel about people who judge, yell, criticize, lecture, punishment? They're sarcastic, they threaten, they place more guilt and shame, right? We avoid them. So the truth receiver is really the key position in this two-sided partnership. Okay, so what do we do? Yeah, what do we do? All right, so we as parents need to be approachable. We used that word just earlier. It doesn't mean we excuse the bad behavior, (laughs) though, or ignore something that needs to be addressed. That's not what we're saying. Consequences still need to happen because that's what teaches learning new behavior, right? Okay. But it does mean that we need to stay calm, we need to stay as neutral as possible, and that we still address the issue. So I call it respond, don't react. When we react, there's usually some pretty intense emotion involved, typically anger, and anger usually makes things worse, which drives people away. But our response, not our reaction, our response to children determines the future interactions we have with them. So our responses to our kids' confessions will teach our kids again whether they're going to be sneaky in the future and dishonest or forthcoming, honest, and open with us. So how do we not let the kids off the hook 
Right. Great question. Okay. There's a shared responsibility before, be, for both the truth teller and the truth receiver, and both have a part in how that communication will go. But when it comes to parenting, we know that we as parents are our children's most important role models and teachers. So we as parents need to role model telling the truth, number one. A lot of times with morality, things are caught more than taught. So they're mm -hmm. observing and, and watching us, right? So we don't expect our kids to be perfect. We aren't either, but we do expect them to take responsibility for mistakes, for sin, for actions that they need to now learn from, right? So this can only happen if we're honest, because if you're role modeling dishonesty, no, no wonder your child is learning right. to be dishonest. But even when we role model the correct behaviors, our children will still fall short. They'll still make mistakes. They're imperfect like we are. They're young. They're immature. They're learning. So we need to point out the mistake and set the expectation and correct that behavior. But we're in teaching mode, not punishing mode. Walking alongside them, not above them. Correct. And so it's, it's calm consequences it's empathy it's oh wow that's a bummer and that's you know that's too bad that you made that decision and now here's what's going to happen we do hold them accountable with the consequence right. but we do it in a calm firm loving manner again our response is key here the relationship must stay healthy and it must stay connected if you break that through anger and wrath and punishment and guilt and shame and lecture and all the things that we're all guilty of um, they will feel threatened and they will avoid us in the future. And now they don't not only not like us, they will not learn from us. So we as parents fail too. Yes. We're not perfect. When we make a mistake, we lie or we fall short. Um, it is really important that we own up to those mistakes, that we confess those. Sometimes it's appropriate to do that with our kids. Sometimes that topic is not appropriate to do. And it's always important that we apologize to our kids. But there are some things I learn, I deal with this in my office a lot of times that adults will share with kids that is not age appropriate. Right. We do not want to burden our kids with adult topics it's or issues. It's just too heavy for them to carry. Yeah. And it's, it is really inappropriate. So we go to other adults when it's an adult issue, not our children. And so we're still honest with our kids, but again, it has to be age appropriate, right? And it needs to be something that's not going to directly burden or impact them. Right. All right. So let's talk about role modeling. Yeah. So the biggest burden really lies with us as parents and as just as God is our truth and the truth receiver for us, we are the truth receiver for our children. So it is our response that matters most. So God has set an example for us, right? It's the only way that works. We must be approachable so that our kids will listen and, and know that we will listen and that we will be trusted with the information they give us. I often say a shocking thing. I say, if your child comes to you with a hangnail or I'm pregnant, your response <laughs> needs to be the same. It's one of my favorite lines. <laughs> yeah. Stay calm. Stay as neutral as you can. You still have con They still have consequences but you're approachable so they know they can come to you. So it doesn't mean we don't, again, implement consequences. It means that we open the door to truth with our calm, loving, forgiving response. We don't approve of the behavior, but we still love and accept them unconditionally. All right. Um, so bigger responsibility. I know a lot of parents in my life put a lot of big responsibilities on top of their kids. Um, how do you feel about that? Yeah, it's a tough one because kids have enough to learn as it is in today's world and to navigate. It's a, it's a really complicated, stressful, stressful world today. Kids have developmental stages where their psyche, their brain, their maturity level, their personality, their approach to everything is incrementally growing and maturing. And again, kids are not mature till their late twenties. Yeah. So to put that in a very immature, inexperienced child and early brain development phase that's not ready for that is very damaging. Okay. Yeah. Well, thank you, Kim. That was a lot of information really <laughs> it was fast. It's kind of a heavy topic, but it's <laughs> so important. But it is extremely important, especially to keep that connection alive that we desperately don't want to break. Yeah, and avoid right? that anger and wrath. That just is so destructive. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. So you don't hold on to secrets until you're 30. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, if you are experiencing a broken relationship with your children, if you have kids who are lying or avoiding talking to you, if you find yourself yelling or intimate and intimidating your children, if anger is your first and only response, get help. There are plenty of resources. It's and they're, it's getting louder now in society. And a lot of a lot more people and parents are encouraging other parents to get help, which is amazing. If anger is your first is your first and only response, get help. If you don't know what to do, call Kim and learn new skills so you can repair or improve the relationship you have with your children. The sooner you act, the sooner things can improve. Our biggest regret in life are the regrets that involve people, especially our children. Take that first and the hardest step step and make a change. Kim can help you do what Kim can help you do that without judgment or guilt and she will teach and support you through it. Yeah, those first steps everybody are really hard. It's kind of a lot of humility involved to realize, okay, I'm making a mistake. I'm in a bad pattern. This isn't working. Right. You have to look at yourself and admit your mistakes. You really do. And it's okay. We all make mistakes. Nobody is perfect in any way, shape or form. We all know that, but that humility that it takes to come and make that first step is so critical mm -hmm. and it will transform the relationship. You will feel less stressed. You'll be more effective. The relationship will heal or bond or repair itself. And there's nothing but good that can come out of that first step. Right. And if you're struggling, the relief alone should be motivation. Oh enough. my goodness. Yes. <laughs> well, thank you all for joining us today. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks, everybody.